Um, this presentation is going to do the math of expected utility to talk about risk aversion. And the math we're going to rely on is something called Jensen's inequality. Um, we're going to derive that result in the case of a two-point support, that is the random outcome can either be a low value or a high value. U is our utility function, and we're going to assume it is strictly concave and increasing. And P is the probability of the low value. It's strictly between 0 and 1, meaning we really do have randomness. And the result we want to show is that the utility of the expected value, this is getting the expected value for certainty, and then um, the utility of that, that is strictly greater than the expected utility of the gamble. So this is a statement that the individual actually um, does not like risk. So let's go through our setup. The random variable we have is x. Um, it has two possible realizations, x1 and x2. x1 is the smaller of the two realizations. We have a utility function u. u is increasing, as I said, and strictly concave. Then we have p is the probability that x is the lower value x1. So since the probabilities have to add up to 1, 1 minus p is the probability that the um, random variable takes on the value x2, the higher value. That's the setup. Let's do a little bit of the math of expectation. The expected value of a random variable is kind of an average where you are weighting by the probabilities. So it's the expectation of x is px1 plus 1 minus px2 u of x, where u is the utility function, is also a random variable, so the expectation of u of x is defined likewise. Um, this is the setup in graphical form. x1 is the lower value. This um, axis is the values axis. This axis is the utility axis, so this blue curve here is the utility function, and it bends uh, in a way to make it concave. So at x1, the utility value is u of x1. x2 is the higher value. At x2, the utility is u of x2. The expectation of x is somewhere between x1 and x2. Um, the bigger the probability of the low value, the closer expectation of x is to that low value. The smaller that probability, the closer the expectation of x is to the high value. I've got it right somewhere in between right now just to make the diagram look readable. Um, if you go up to the utility function at the expectation of x, that is the utility of the expectation of x. So now let's explain what else is drawn here. There is a chord between the two points x1 u of x1 and x2 u of x2. That chord is this gray segment here. The function lies above the chord. That is a defining property of uh, concave functions, that the function is above the chord. And what we want to show, and I'm indicating the result in this diagram, but we haven't shown it yet, is that if you go from expectation x to the chord, the value is the expected utility of the gamble. So that's what we're going to show. At the moment, I don't want to worry about this point called the certainty equivalent. We'll come back to it at the end. Now, in this diagram, all I've done is taken the previous one and extend the horizontal line at u of x1 all the way out to x2. And then I want to have you observe two triangles. One is this one. There's the base. There's the height. It's a right triangle. The base uh, has length x2 minus x1. The height is u of x2 minus u of x1. And now a smaller triangle that goes from x1 to expectation of x and goes up to the um, gray chord. Uh, this smaller triangle is similar to the bigger one because they're both right triangles and they share this common angle here. 
uh, the base of the smaller one has um, size expectation of x minus x1, we will determine this height. So I'm just going to summarize that uh, algebraically. The larger triangle, the base was x2 minus x1. The height was u of x2 minus u of x1. In the smaller triangle, the base is expectation of x minus x1, and the height is what we're trying to determine. Um, and now I just want to do a little bit of algebra. The expectation of x minus x1, well, here we're expanding the expectation of x. Here we're subtracting off x1. So px1 minus x1 is minus 1 minus px1, and I have a plus 1 minus px2. If I combine that, this is what I get, 1 minus p times x2 minus x1. And if you'll note, the base of the smaller triangle is therefore 1 minus p times the base of the larger triangle. And so we know the height should also be in proportion 1 minus p. And that's what we conclude over here. So the height of the smaller triangle is 1 minus p times u of x2 minus u of x1. Um, again, because the triangles are similar. Now I'm going to add the starting point of that smaller triangle. It started at height u of x1, and the height of the triangle um, together. So I have u of x1 plus 1 minus p, u of x2 minus u of x1. When I do that, I've got u of x1 minus 1 minus p u of x1. That just is p u of x1 plus 1 minus p u of x2. and that's what I've got written over here. That's the expectation of u of x. So what we've shown, in fact, is that the diagram actually does produce what I said it produced. If you go up from here to here, that total length is the expectation of u of x, and that's all there is to it. Where's the recording? Oh, shit ski.